All right. Hello, everybody. How you doing today? Welcome, everybody, on social media. Hey, we're studying about the kings of Israel and Judah. You remember, there was a, originally there was the kingdom of Israel, and uh, in the process of time, it split into two separate kingdoms, uh, and one known as Israel in the north, Judah in the south. And we've been looking at the kings of each, kind of studying them concurrently, looking at some kings of Judah, and then looking at some kings of Israel. And uh, we're several weeks into this study, and uh, uh, and, and so, uh, but uh, but but yeah, there were kings of Israel, kings of Judah. We're looking at them, as I said, concurrently, and uh, uh, we can learn a lot of lessons from these kings. And so, uh, last week we started with King Asa. Uh, I say we started with we we started several weeks ago, but last week, last uh, uh, Sunday, we. Uh, began Asa, and he was the third king of Judah. Remember, that was the uh, kingdom in the south. And, um, um, and so we, we got about halfway through with him. So let me finish him up this morning, and then hopefully we'll get into the next, uh, the next king, which is Ahab, that we want to look. He was in the north in Israel. But Asa, remember, when he came to power, he was a good king. And uh, when he took the throne, he uh, instituted a series of spiritual reforms. Actually, his name means healer or reformer. And so he, he began to institute a bunch of uh, spiritual reforms. And he went from town to town throughout the land, removing pagan altars and shrines and prohibiting the sins associated with, with those pagan gods. And he restored proper worship to, to the Lord, to the Lord Jehovah God. And uh, uh, there was great revival. He removed the perverted persons from the land, the sexual, sexually perverse people. He removed them from the land. And he commanded that Judah seek the Lord. And the Bible says that as a result of that, the, uh, the land uh, built and prospered. And, uh, and then we noted last week that... Uh, there was a massive army that came up against him from Ethiopia, and, uh, and he, he was far outnumbered, Asa was far outnumbered, and in the natural it looked like they were going to suffer a terrible defeat, but they, they cried out to the Lord, and remember Asa weighed the, uh, the army that was coming against him, not against himself, but against the Lord, and and that army that was over a million, probably over a million man army that was coming against him, but he weighed that million man army against the Lord. And, uh, and when you weigh something against yourself, you know, <laughs> you can get discouraged, but whatever you're facing, if you weigh it against the Lord, whatever you're facing is very small compared to God. And he weighed that million man army against the Lord and, and they sought the Lord and God gave them a great, 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 wonderful, wonderful uh, victory. Uh, one of the things he said, he, he said to the Lord, he said, uh, he said, Lord, this is nothing for you. And so no matter what you're facing, it's nothing for God. It may be big to you, but it's nothing for the Lord. And again, the Lord gave them a, vi a great victory. And as they were returning, now we'll get to the new material, as they were returning victorious from this victory over Ethiopia and this massive army, um, it, it, again, it was a victory against all odds. But you know, God can give you a victory when all the odds are against you, if you'll seek him. But this prophet, as they returned, Asa, as they returned from this battle and this great victory, there was a prophet named uh, Ezra. And uh, he took the opportunity to remind Asa and the entire nation that this success had come from the Lord. We need to always remember whenever we experience you know, we cry out to God, we're facing something that's insurmountable, we cry, we cry out to God and He helps us and we have success. We always need to remember and never forget that it was the Lord that gave us that success. And you'd be surprised how many people, uh, they're, they're in trouble, they seek God, God helps them, and, and they have great victory and then they forget God. And it happens again and again and again and again. That's a lesson we need to learn that when God gives us victory, don't ever forget where the victory came from. Came from the Lord. And in Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1, the Bible says, The Spirit of God came on Azara, and the son of Obed, and he went out and met Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you are with him. 
Well, I mean, that's a good lesson to, to, to get right there. The Lord is with us while we're with him. If you seek him, if you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. We need to think about that. Uh, if, if we'll seek God, he'll be found by us. If we'll seek him with our whole heart. But if we forsake him, he'll forsake us. Now, I don't want to forsake the Lord. But I tell you what, if we do, he'll forsake us. So let's don't ever forget that. And then in verse three, for, and then he said this, he said, for a long time, see, when Asa came into power, he brought much reform to Judah, as we've already said. And then he says this here, this prophet, the Holy Spirit through this prophet is telling Asa and the people here, for a long time, Israel has been without the true God. Now you think about that because you know, under those previous kings, there had been much pagan worship and whatnot. Asa brought those reforms. And he said, for a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest and without law. And I think those are significant. I think we need to think about those. Uh, you know, we don't want to be without the true God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the nation had been without the true God without a teaching priest and without law, without the law of the Lord, without the word of God. And I tell you what, when, when you don't have the teaching of the word of God, you're going to you're going to you're going to lose um, uh, you're going to lose the relationship you need to have with the true God, the one true God. I see that here in the United States over the last couple of decades as you know, since the 1960s, the commandments of the Lord have been thrown out of the public schools. And, uh, and, and, it, and if you look into so many pulpits, not all, but so many pulpits in so many churches, you'd be surprised if you really studied how little teaching of the Word of God and how little teaching of doctrine is being done. Amen. Very little in this, in this United States, very little teaching, teaching, of, of the word of God, you know, and uh, and I tell you what, without the word of God, without the law of God, without the commandments of God and without the teaching, you, you see, men and women of God should stand behind pulpits and not entertain uh, congregations. Uh, they should teach the word of God and teach doctrine, you know, and uh, uh and certainly there's practical sermons that need to be preached. There's inspirational sermons that need to be preached. Nothing wrong with telling a story. And, and we ought to tell stories that illustrate the word of, stories that illustrate the word of God. But just telling stories to entertain people. See, if, if that's all you have in the process of time, you lose, you, you lose the relationship, the, the fellowship you need with the one true God. And that's what had happened in Judah and in Israel. They, they had been without the law. They had been without the teaching, the minister's teaching. And so they, they wound up without the true God. And, and, and my prayer for the United States is that men and women of God, pastors and preachers would come into pulpits and teach the word of God. And, uh, and, and, and so that we, uh, the United States to get back where we need to be as a whole, you know, with, with Almighty God. But anyway, he said, for a long time, Israel had been without the true God, without a teaching priest and without law. Verse four, but when in their trouble, they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. So, you know, even, even if you get away from the Lord, if you'll have a change of heart and repent, and, and turn back to him, I tell you what, he's gracious and he's merciful. You know what Second Chronicles, you don't have to turn there, but you ought to have this one memorized. Second Chronicles 714, remember says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. So don't ever forget that verse. And even if you do get away from the Lord, if you repent, and, and, and confess your sins and get back to him, he'll receive you back and he'll heal you and help you, you see. And that's true for a nation. It's true for an individual, you see. Anyway, verse seven, then he said this, but you be strong and do not let your hands be weak. 
So that's good advice for all of us. Let's be strong and don't let our hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. And I tell you what, any work that you do for the Lord will eventually be rewarded. It may not be rewarded in a day, in a, in a week, in a month or a year, but eventually if you'll be faithful to the Lord, he'll bless the work of your hand. He really will. And then verse eight said, when Asa heard these words, and the prophecy, you know, from this prophet, he took courage and removed, then notice what happened, and removed the abominable, abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim. And he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. See, there was further reform. Now, after this great victory against Ethiopia and the Holy Spirit spoke to him, he then continued with his reform and continued to, uh, to, to wipe out idols in the land and, and so on and so forth. And then verse 12 says, then they entered, this is Judah here, they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart, with all their soul. And uh, whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was put to death. Now you think about that. That's how serious Asa was about this nation is going to serve, this nation of Judah is going to serve God. And anybody who isn't going to serve God, what did the Bible say would be put to death? That's pretty serious, isn't it? Yeah. He said, whether small or great, whether man or woman. So, I mean, he was laying down the law. He was saying, we're going to serve God. I think it was Joshua who said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that was, that's what Asa was doing here. And you're not going to serve Almighty God. He, capital punishment. You say that's pretty tough. Well, it is, but that's what he did. And look at the blessing that came as a result of it. Look at the blessing that came as a result of doing away with idols. Look at the blessing that came with doing away with uh, a sexual perversion. It brought great blessing and peace to the land. And uh, notice uh, verse 15 says, And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought God with all their soul. And he was found by them and the Lord gave them rest all around. See, that's what happens when, 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 uh, and that's what you could see that in the United States. I'm not, you know, I'm not advocating putting, putting people to, to death or anything. That's what they did here. But uh, I tell you what, if, 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 if this nation would get serious about seeking the Lord and, and doing away with sin, you would see rest in this nation like you've never seen. You'd see peace in this nation like you'd never seen if God was put first and, and all the sexual perversion and all the idolatry and everything was done away with. You, you would see rest in this nation like you've never seen since since its inception, you know. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Terry, do you think we'll ever see that? Well, I, I, to be honest with you, I'd be shocked if we ever did. But, you know, we'll just we'll just see. Anyway, um, but if you go down to verse 16, then there's something else that shows us just how serious Asa was about, uh, about bringing righteousness to the nation is he did something to his grandmother. Now, the Bible calls, uh, calls it his, his, his mother, but it was actually his grandmother. Look at verse 16. Also, he, Asa, removed Mac, I, I guess you say that Maca, however you say that, his, uh, the mother of Asa, actually it was his grandmother, uh, he, he removed her from being the queen mother. Now, why did he do it? Because she made an obscene image of Asherah, which was a, a, a idol, an idol, a, a false god. But she'd made a, an obscene image of this Asherah, and Asa cut down her obscene image, then crushed and burned it by the, by the brook Kidron. I mean, he's serious about this nation's going to live holy if you do that to your grandmother. I'm sure he loved his grandmother, but he wasn't going to uh, tolerate her idolatry. And uh, but, but then it says the high places were not removed from Israel. See, he got most of the idolatry out of it, but he, he, he wasn't able to get all of it out, but he got a lot of it out. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was loyal all his days. I mean, you got to be pretty serious if you're going to cut down your mother or your grandmother's uh, 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 idol, you know, but he, he was serious. It didn't matter if it was his grandmother, who it was, you know, he was going to bring holiness and righteousness to this nation. And then in verse 19 says, there was no war 
until the 35th year of his reign. So they had a lot of peace in the land as a result of, of the, these reforms that he made. Now it's interesting, in the 36th year of his reign, Basha, the king of Israel, now you need to remember that Israel and Judah would, would have, some, they'd have some warring going on between them, quite a bit of it actually. And uh, sometimes there'd be some peace, but, 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 but war between the two, Israel and Judah. But notice the, the, uh, Basha, or Basha, the king of Israel, now listen to this, came against Asa, something very interesting. And you can read the details in 2 Chronicles 16, so you could read that whole chapter. But here's what happened. Israel comes against Asa. Now remember what happened, we, we talked about it last week, and I mentioned it today, when Ethiopia came against Asa with that million man army, what did Asa do? He had everybody seek the Lord, and, and, and he, Asa himself said, Lord, it's nothing for you to, to, it's nothing for you to give us victory over this million man army, you know, it's nothing for you. And God gave him great victory, but now, Basha, the king of Israel, is coming against him, and uh, uh, a threat, no doubt, but not a threat like Ethiopia. I mean, that was a million-man army. This was a threat, but nothing like Ethiopia. With Ethiopia, Asa sought the Lord. But notice what he does here. It, 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 it's interesting here, if you, if you read the story, what he does is he hires the king of Syria, instead of seeking the Lord, he hires Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, and paid him a large sum of money to help him in this battle against Israel. Now you think about that. And, and, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was an enemy. He was like a type of the devil. Now just think about, just think about, here's a man, I, I want to reiterate this, here's a man who has a million man army coming against him sometime earlier and he seeks the Lord and the Lord gives him great victory and now he has a threat but it's much less of a threat and now he's not going to seek the Lord, he's going to hire the devil to help him. Now you think about it, why, why would a man do that? I, I don't know. I mean, we need to learn from him though. Let's don't do what he did here. Let's do what he did when he was facing Ethiopia. Let's seek the Lord. But, but see, I'm teaching on this so that we can learn these lessons from these kings so that we can do the things that they did right, not do the things that they, that, that, that they did wrong. And this is something that he shouldn't have done. And he hired the king of Syria to help him against Israel. He shouldn't have done that. How many of you want to hire the devil to help you? I, I, I don't, but that's what he did. And, and it's interesting, God had a prophet come to him. And you know, this is something I don't want you to miss. Again and again, you'll see in this series, you've already seen it, uh, uh, but, but you'll see it as we go. God in his great mercy, in his, in his great love, and in, in his great grace, will send prophets to these kings to deal with them to get them to repent or to warn them of things, you know. And, and God does it again and again and again. And sometimes the kings would listen. A lot of times the kings wouldn't listen. Sometimes they get mad at the prophet. We're going to see that here in just a moment. But what I don't want you to miss is that always be glad when God is sending a, a, a man of God or a woman of God your way to, to, to bring a word to you that you need to hear in due season. That's a good thing. And God does that. That's one of his MOs, methods of operation. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll send people to you. He'll send messages to you. He'll have a pastor stand in a pulpit and preach a, preach a word to you that you need to hear in due season. And God does it again and again with these kings. Isn't, I mean, God is really, really good. He's really, 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 really good and merciful. But anyway, so Asa... Uh, <laughs> He hired Ben-Hadad and then Hanani, I guess that's how you say that, 2 Chronicles 16, verse 7. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 7. Hanani, the seer or the prophet, came to Asa, the king of Judah, and said, Because you have relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. And then he says, were the Ethiopians and the Libyans not a huge army with, with very many chariots and hor horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. 
For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Have you ever heard that verse before? And, and, and then he, the prophet says to him, this is God speaking to him through the prophet. In this you have done foolishly. What, what's that? In, in hiring Ben-Hadad, seeking help from the enemy. You've done foolishly. Now, now if, 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 if a minister came and said to you, you've done foolishly. You, 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 you did a dumb thing. I wonder how many of you all would get mad at that preacher for telling you that. You know, I tell you what, most people I've dealt with in 27 years, if I told that to them, they'd get mad at me. Even if I was speaking by the Spirit of God and told them that privately, they'd get mad and leave. But the prophet said to him, in this you've done foolishly, therefore from now on you'll have wars. Well, think about it. They had all that peace when they were seeking God. Now they sought help from the enemy. Now they're going to have turbulence and wars. And notice verse 10 to back up what I just said about people getting angry. Watch this. Then Asa, did, did your Bible say Asa listened to the prophet and was glad that he delivered that word to him? The Bible said Asa was angry with the seer, with the prophet. He got mad at him. He got mad at him for telling him the truth. He got mad at him for speaking the word of the Lord to him. And this really was the word of the Lord. This wasn't just something and I came up with himself. This, the Bible said the spirit, uh, see, uh, uh, Hanani, the seer came to Asa. Well, he was a seer. It doesn't specifically say that the that I read that the hand of the Lord came on him. Sometimes it says that. But nonetheless, the Bible brings out that Hananiah was a seer, a prophet. And, and I think we can clearly uh, conclude that he was sent by the direction of the Lord. This was not just something Hananiah concocted himself. I mean, if, if a man of God concocts something himself and tells you something because he's being a jerk or whatever, I can see where you'd get angry with it. But if a man of God is standing in humility and like Hananiah and he's sent, he's a seer, he's sent by the hand of God, by the direction of the Lord and gives you what you need to hear, you ought to receive it and make the correction, you see. But, but, but Asa was angry with the seer and you'll, and you'll see this again and again. You'll see it again and again when we get to Uzziah. He, he, he's one of the best examples of this, that God sent a priest to him and tried to correct him and help him. And he got angry. The Bible said he became wroth or angry with the priests because they came trying to help him, to, to correct him, to get him back on track. And here he got angry. What lesson do we learn? When the pastor or the preacher tells you something by the Spirit of God, preaches the Word of God, tells you something that you need to hear, don't get angry uh, with him or her. You know, don't, what was the old saying? Don't, don't shoot the messenger just because he brought the, you know what I mean? Is that right? You know, don't get angry at the preacher. If he's really in a humble heart coming with the Word of the Lord, you know, and, and not trying to embarrass you or nothing like that, but trying to help you and correct you, you know, uh, don't get mad at him. Be glad that God loves you enough to chasten you. You know, the Bible says if we're out, if we're out, if we're without chastisement, then we're illegitimate, not even children of God. You know, so be glad. The Bible says as many as the Lord loves, he rebukes and chastens, you know. So be glad when God's correcting you. And many times he'll do it through a, like a pastor standing preaching a message. I can't tell you how many times in 27 years I've stood here and I've humbly, lovingly preached a message and it stepped on people's toes. I didn't even know it was stepping on their toes. I didn't even know they were doing certain things. that. But you know, the Lord will get the pastor off on some things once in a while, you know, and he'll get over I would never go to a church if you're if you're going to a church where the pastor is never preaching messages that steps on your toes you're in the wrong church I said you're in the wrong church because if you're really in the church that God wants you to be in there's going to be some times when the pastor will will step on your toes and most time he won't even know he's doing it he's just up there preaching away you know 
and, 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 and so forth. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not talking about he calls you out of the crowd and embarrasses you. I'm not talking about that. I'm just so many times I've been up over 27 years just teaching, just minding my own business, just teaching. You know, sometimes the Lord might have me get off on something, you know, and I just I don't even know why I got off on it, you know, and, and then just go right back, just teaching right away, you know, and, and again and again and again over 27 years, dozens and dozens and dozens of people get angry, mad as a wet hornet and leave. Just absolutely leave. Just, just, just absolutely leave. Absolutely. Uh, I remember one time years ago, I, I came up into the pulpit, minding my own business, had a message, started preaching, and somehow or another, I got off over on, uh, on, on, uh, I, and I don't even know why I did it. I, well, I just lead into the Lord. I just, and I said, I made the statement. I said, uh, I said, you know. Uh, uh, and I didn't know what was going on with people in the congregation, sir, a couple hundred people, you know, at that time. And I said, uh, I said, now, you know, you need to find out who your pastor is, where your church is. You need to seek the Lord and you need to hook in there and be planted in there. And nothing wrong with visiting once in a while, another church, nothing wrong with that. But but you need to find, you, did you know most people don't seek the Lord concerning where they're supposed to go to the church? They just go wherever they it makes them feel good or their friends are going. Or Do you know your friend won't have, your friend's pastor won't have the word of God for you? Your pastor will. You need to find, you know, on a weekly basis, you know. You need to, I've had so many people leave here, and walk out as I'm greeting them at the door and say, Pastor, how'd you know I need to preach that? To, how'd you know I need to hear that today? How'd you know I need to hear that today? How'd you know I need to hear that today? I mean, hundreds of them over, over the, 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 the many years. And you know why, you, you know, I, you know why they're saying that? Because they're in the right church. They're where they're supposed to be. And, and, and God's flowing through to them what they need, what they need to hear, you see. Pastor, how'd you know I need to hear that? How'd you know I need to hear that? See, that's one way you can tell you're in the right spot. But uh, I got up and I said, you know, you need to find, you need to seek the Lord. Find out where he wants you to go. And, and God will have one church for you and he'll have one pastor for you. At a, at a time. Now, there's times where he may change that over the years, you know, and, and move you to another church. He might do that. But I got I was just up here preaching. And I said that God will have one pastor for you in one church. I said, you need you need to hook in there. Nothing wrong with visiting now and then. But I said another church. I said, you need to hook in there and be there and be faithful there. And I said, because if you get to go into two churches and you get to go into two churches regularly, it's going to mess you up spiritually because you'll get two visions going Going on on the inside of you, you get the the one vision of the one church. You get the other vision of the other church, and, and wherever there's uh, I, one guy wrote a book or something said two two visions equal division. I said you get divisions going division going on. You get torn between the two. You won't be able to be loyal to the one. You, you understand? And I said something along those lines, and then I just went right on with my teaching. Well, there was a man I didn't know it. There was a man attending the church at that time, and I mean. He got so angry and so upset, and I didn't know it. I had no clue. But him and his wife, for, for many months, they, 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 they started attending another church, and they were attending another church in this church. And they'd go there one week, and, and or they'd go there a couple of weeks, and here a couple of weeks, and there a couple of weeks, and here a couple of weeks. And I didn't know that was going on, you know. And he got so mad at me, I mean, just mad as a wet horn, and I'm just up here, standing up here, doing my job, you know. But it's interesting when, uh, and, and they got mad at me and left. <laughs> But the thing of it is, see, is, uh, 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 and, 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 anyway, but the thing of it is, is that when, when God brings correction to you, don't get angry at the Lord. Don't get angry at the man bringing the, the correction. Be thankful God loves you enough to correct you and keep you on, on track. Are, are you okay with that? You know, you, you see, but he got angry with the seer and look at this. He got angry with the preacher and put him in prison. Now, I've never been put in prison. I think some people would have liked to put me in prison over the years, but I've never been put in prison. For he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. He got mad at some of the people. He was just mad. He got mad, you know. So here's a good king. The Bible calls him a good king. But uh, 
but, but he, he, he uh, was having a bad season in his life. Have you ever had a bad season in your life, you know? And, and he, just, he just was. He got angry at the, at the preacher, got angry at the prophet, put him in prison, angry at the people. And he shouldn't have done that. So let's learn a lesson from Asa and don't do that. Amen. Let's don't hire the enemy and let's don't get mad at, at, at God or the preacher or, you know, when, when we're corrected. All right. You know, I, I've sat in messages where preachers have have corrected me, you know, and uh, uh, whatnot. And uh, I've always, you know, I mean, I don't think anybody really likes correction. But I tell you what, I've always realized God just loves me. You know, and he's just showing me he loves me as he's stepping on my toes. I also learned this, that it, whenever God steps on your toes, if you'll uh, repent, he'll turn right around and heal them, you know. That's a good thing, you see. But a lot of people, particularly here in the United States, don't want their, don't want their, toe, <laughs> don't want their toes stepped on, you know. And, um, and, and anyway, but when he does step on your toes, uh, if it's really God doing it, repent. Be, be glad he is. He's trying to do it for your own, or he's doing it for your own good, trying to help you. And then have good sense enough to repent and he'll turn around, heal your toes and everything will be okay. Now here's something, the last lesson from Asa that, that I want to show you is here in Second Chronicles 16. Notice verse 11. It says, note that the acts of Asa, first and last, are indeed also written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. I just want to make a statement. Your reading assignment is 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. And, and sometimes people will say, well, why are we reading the Chronicles? Because they're just like the kings. Well, really, if you get into it, they're really not. Did you know about half of the material in Chronicles is unique to that book? So there's a lot of material in Chronicles that you won't get in the Kings. And actually, it's, it's, uh, it does cover a lot of the same material, but it's covering it from two different perspectives, you know. Kings has to do more with Israel and Judah. Chronicles has more to do with Judah, you know. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Kings, I think, was written by Jeremiah. So it has the, it, we think it's written by Jeremiah. So it has the view of a, from, from a, a, a prophetical view. And then Chronicles was written by, I think it was Ezra. So it has more of the view of a, of a priest or, and, and and there's much I could say about it, but I don't want to get off and talk, talk about the difference between Kings and Chronicles. But there is, it's good to, because a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to read Chronicles. I'll just read the Kings. You get a lot of material in Chronicles that you won't get in the Kings. So you read them both and you get, you get the whole, whole story on some things, particularly Chronicles brings out a lot of stuff that happened in, in Judah, particularly. But with that said, it says, note the acts of Asa first and last. Now listen carefully to this, which are deed written in the book of the Kings. Verse 12, and in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet. Now he, here he's got, he got sickness hit him. And his malady was severe. So it was a severe thing. Now watch this. Here's the lesson. Watch this. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians only. Now think about that. Now here's a man who had a million man army coming again him and he sought the Lord, had great victory. They sought the Lord, sought the Lord, had great victory. Then Israel comes, comes against him and, and now he's hiring the enemy for help and we talked about that. But now he's got sickness hit his body and the Bible clearly says it was severe, hit him in his feet and there's speculation as to what it was. But nonetheless, he's got this foot disease, feet disease, it was severe. He did not seek the Lord, but the physicians only. Now, I want to just stop right here and think about this and talk to you a little bit. He should have sought the Lord, shouldn't have he? He should have sought the Lord. He absolutely should have. He didn't. He turned to the physicians only. Now, listen, very, let me make myself clear. I believe in the healing power of God. I've seen multitudes of people healed over the last uh, almost three decades in, under this ministry. Multitudes of them. I believe in the healing power of God. I also believe that God has given us good hospitals, good doctors, and good medicines. Okay, I believe that with all of my heart. And, and so I'm of the opinion, and I think it's a good opinion, that when we're dealing with sickness and disease... And it hits us and it comes to our life, it hits us, that we start out by seeking the Lord. And we, and we believe Him. 
okay? And, 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 and we seek him. I also, as I said, believe that good hospitals, doctors, and medicines are there at the hand of God. And uh, I've said this for years to people. I've said to them, you know, being in the, a pastor for almost three decades, you deal with a lot of people that have dealt with a lot of sickness and disease. And I've told them again and again, between what God does and between what the doctors do, I believe you're going to be just fine. Okay. I think that's a good stance to take. And, and, and I've always told people when they've come to me, I said, let's seek the Lord first. Let's seek the Lord concerning this, this sickness that's hit your body. And, and, and you know, in, in some cases, we've sought the Lord. We've laid hands upon him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The healing power of God hit their body. They were healed, some of them instantly, some of them process of time, and never had to turn to the doctors. Okay? There's, there's been other situations where people have come and, and we've sought the Lord and, 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 and we could see that we we're just that wasn't going to be able to, to receive for whatever reason, just directly the power of God hitting the body and being healed. But, but the people would have faith that, that, that God would use the doctors and the medical system to, to, get, to get their healing. And so we've gone that route. We've seen a lot of people get healed that way that, that you know, they entered the hospital or they went for the operation and that we did so. We, we had the foundation of prayer underneath that. And again and again, people have gone into the operation and they've come out of the operation. It was a total success. And the doctor said, man, they recovered. You, you recovered quicker than, than we've ever seen anybody recover. But you see, it, it, we sought the Lord first and then we turned to the doctors, you see. You understand what I'm saying? And that's, that's a good balance to have. And, uh, but, but you don't ever want to just, and not one time have I ever told anybody, let's just immediately turn to the doctors. Let's turn to God first, right? Let's turn to God first. And, 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 and then let's be led of the Spirit of God. And, and many times he'll lead you to go to the doctor. He'll lead, and y'all, we all ought to go to the doctors on a regular basis and have annual checkups and all of that. I think we're unwise if we don't, you know. But, but, but a lot of times he'll lead, and many, multitudes of people, he's, he's led us to, okay, let's go to the doctor and let's get, get the help from the doctor. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's unfortunate that, 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 that in the, in the, in the uh, word of faith circles, you know, I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but it's unfortunate that sometimes people are made to feel less or inferior because they went to the doctor. And, and I tell you what, I, I personally feel that if you take the position of, I'm never going to use doctors no matter what, I'm just going to use God and trust Him, and I'm never going to turn to the doctors, I tell you what, there's been a lot of people that have died doing that. I, I, I think of uh, one story I'm thinking of, 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 of that a minister friend of mine told me that a woman, she, she discovered, uh, this wasn't here in this church, but he was telling me that... Uh, uh, he, he said that uh, there was a, a woman in this certain pastor's church and she, she felt a lump in her breast and she uh, was not going to turn to the doctor. No, I'm going to believe God, going to believe God, going to believe God, just going to believe God, not going to, not going to, just going to believe God. And long story short, the thing kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally, when she did go to the doctors and they, they did the mammogram and the, all of the ultrasound, and it was, a, it was a malignant tumor. And they told her, if you had come, you know, six, eight months ago, whatever it was, we could have helped you. But now we can't. And, and she wound up dying. I think we make a mistake if we're going to say, well, I'm just going to believe God and not ever open myself up to doctors at all. I think we make a mistake because I think God has provided good hospitals, doctors, and medicines. We live in a very blessed time, ladies and gentlemen. We really do. We, we really do. And, and so I think if we say, well, we're just going to turn to God and never the doctors, I think we, we make a mistake there. But I think we make an even bigger mistake if we say, I'm just going to go to the doctors and I'm not going to consult God at all. I think that's a bigger mistake. Don't you? Yeah. So I think what we do is, is when sickness would hit our body is, now what did Asa do? He just turned to the doctors. 
Did you know that, that uh, he didn't seek the Lord? Do you know there's a lot of things the doctors can't help you with? Did you know that? I mean, we live in a wonderful day, and the medical science is wonderful, but there's a lot of things the doctors can't help you with. And by the way, I'm aware of some emergency rooms, and I won't call, <laughs> won't call any names, but I'm aware of some emergency rooms that if you have an emergency and you go to that emergency room, you're going to have a double emergency because they're not very good. And, you, and if the disease don't kill you, the people there will. Now, I don't mean that ugly, but I mean, <laughs> there's some that, but I, I would say probably most emergency rooms, you know, are, are, are probably very well, uh, very good. I'm a f familiar with maybe one of them that you <laughs> would want to go to because you'd have a double emergency. And there's, a, there's some nurses I saw there at that one. I'm not going to let them, I don't want them to put a shot needle in my arm, you know. I mean, just, you, you're liable to kill you. You know what I'm talking about? How many knows what I'm talking about? But, but, uh, but we live in a very wonderful, wonderful day. But I tell you what, if all you do is turn to the doctors and, 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 and like Asa did and you never turn to God, listen, there's lots of things the doctors can help you with, but there's a lot of things they can't. You understand that? And so, so Asa got it wrong here. He just turned to the doctors and the Bible says he sought the, only the physicians. And I believe it cost him. And eventually he died. Sad, isn't it? Yep. Don't you think if he'd have sought God, God would have helped him? Yep. Absolutely. But he didn't seek the Lord. And so my, to sum it up, with sickness and disease, let's seek the Lord. If hit, sickness hits your body, let's seek the Lord. Let, and, and I tell you what, let me make myself clear. If something hits your body, like a lump in the breast or something like that, and you know, it's, it, it, you understand... I mean, you seek the Lord, but you need to go. When I say seek the Lord, I, I mean, you know, seek the Lord for a, a time, but get yourself as quick as you can for medical assistance. Can anybody say amen to that? In other words, don't seek the Lord for six months. I like what one good preacher said. Uh, he, he said this. He said, uh, if something hits your body and it's life threatening, you know, potentially, and you see that you're not getting you're not receiving directly the power of God like like you would like and you're not seeing results he said get yourself to the medical people as quickly as you can don't you think that's good sound solid advice so let's seek god first and let's believe him and trust him uh, I, I will say this a lot of people don't start seeking god concerning health until something really serious has hit their body and, 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 you know, I've said this for years. If we can't believe God to get, to get healed of a headache, how do we think we're going to be able to believe God to get healed of cancer? Remember David? He practiced his covenant on the lion and on the bear, right? And then when the giant showed up, he was ready for him. So I think we ought to be using our faith and practicing on these littler things so that if and when something life-threatening shows up, we're, we, we, we're ready. You understand what I'm saying? You know, it's like that commercial from the, what was it, the 60s or the 70s where that, that little scrawny guy was laying at the beach with his, with his girlfriend, you know, and this big muscular guy comes up and takes the girlfriend away and kicks the sand in the little scrawny guy's face, you know, and the scrawny guy goes out to the gym and starts working out, you know, because he wants to get his girlfriend back. Well, he should have been working out in the gym long before that, uh, that, that, <laughs> Long before that muscle guy showed up. Is that right? But see, a lot of people want to do that as it pertains to the things of God. You know, they wait till the big serious thing comes up, you know, and, uh, and then, they, uh, then they want to believe God then. Well, why don't we believe him on these smaller issues, you know? Uh, I remember a, a minister years ago, I was at a pastor's uh, uh, convention our pastor seminar, and there was probably about 60 pastors there, you know, and, and they had this one speaker up, and he was a, a pastor in the region, and, 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 and uh, uh, he had heard that some of the pastors were going to use their faith, and they were not going to carry health insurance. And so, then that was kind of the thing going on among some of the pastors, a few of them, that they were going to just believe God and not have any health insurance at all. We're just going to believe God. 
And that's what some of the pastors were, because I'd heard some of them talking about that. Well, this kind of elder minister got up and he made the statement. He said, I understand some of you, uh, you know, he just, God bless him. He just confronted it. He said, I believe, uh, he said, I heard some of you don't want to, uh, uh, aren't going to get health insurance because you're going to just bless God, believe God. And uh, he said, he said, uh, he said, now, which would be easier to believe God for? Now, things have changed in the premiums now. How many of you know health insurance premiums are really high? But back there then, when he was making this statement, you could get a real good ins health insurance policy for, you know, I don't know, a, a reasonable amount of money. Things have gotten out of control over the last couple of decades. But this goes back probably 30 years ago. And he said to the ministers, he said, he said, don't you think it would be easier to believe God for a $70 a month health insurance premium? He said, don't you think it would be easier to do that than to wait until you have to have a major surgery and you're facing a, a, a $1.5 million health bill and then you're going to try to believe God for $1.5 million? He said, wouldn't it be easier just to believe God for $70 a month. And then if the big thing hits, then, uh, you know, and you had to have that surgery, then you'd have the insurance to pay the $1.5 million, you see. Don't you see that's wisdom, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you can't believe God for $70 a month, or whatever, whatever the amount is back there then, I mean, how do you think you're going to be able all of a sudden believe God, to believe God miraculously for, one, for over a million dollars? And you know what? Guess what? It goes right along with my message here. A lot of those pastors, you know what they did? They got mad at that guy for saying that and didn't come back. <laughs> didn't want to receive any kind of correction. Well, I, I had a good health insurance policy at that time, so that didn't apply to me, but I would have had one anyway because I, at, at that time I was still teaching school and I had a health policy, but... Uh, but uh, but I'd have one. I still have one. I've carried one all these years. And over the last couple of many years, they've gotten out of control, you know, and you're paying astronomical amounts of money for, for, all, for you know, terrible coverage, you know. And if something does go wrong, you got to pay like $8,000 before, before the insurance kicks in. You know, that's not right, is it? No, it's not. But anyway, that, this happened about 30 years ago when he made that statement. And, uh, but it's really true. If we can't believe God for the smaller things... Why do we think we're going, to all, 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 we're going to be able to believe him for the big stuff? And, uh, but anyway, so if sickness hits your body, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Find out from God what he wants you to do. Seek the Lord. And then, you know, you might be able to just receive, receive from God your healing. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? But nothing wrong with, with the doctors. And I want to say it again. Many times God has led us as we counsel people. Let's, let's turn to the doctors and the hospitals. And, and I've, do, I've talked to many people. I've asked them, do you believe God can just, can just, just do you believe God will just heal you right here? Can you, re, let me phrase it right. Do you, can, do you believe you can receive from God right now, right here on the spot? And again and again, they'll, they'll, they'll stutter at that. But then I'll say to them, do you believe that if, we turn to the doctors that they can help you and God working with them. And, and people say, yeah, I believe that. Well, see, that's the avenue you need to take. See, God will meet you where your faith is, you see. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so I learned early on, you know, when I'm dealing with people in the ministry as a pastor, if, if I ask them, do you believe that you... Now, how many of you know God wants to heal everybody? How many of you know he can heal everybody? How many of you know he's provided that in the atonement and, and in what Jesus did at, at Calvary? And, and so healing's available for everybody. But did you know not everybody is on a level of faith to receive that? And I've dealt with so many people. I said, do you believe that you can just receive from God right here, right now to be instantly healed? And well, well... And I said, okay, I don't put them down. I say, but hey, do you believe that, that if we turn to the hospitals that God can use the doctors and the medicines to help you? And they'll say, yeah, pastor, I can believe that. So then I learned early on, that's the route we take, you see. But I'm never going to tell people, just believe God, period, and don't turn to the doctors. I'm not going to say that to people. Nor am I going to say, well, go to the doctor immediately and don't seek God. What do we do? We seek the Lord. 
We, if we could receive from him right on the spot, that's wonderful. But if we see we're not, we're not getting results right away, it's not God holding out. It's not, the problem's not on his end, it'd be on our end. Is that right? But if we see we're not making, getting results as we should, then let's turn to the, turn to, turn to the doctors and, 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 uh, and let, let God, uh, between what God does and the doctors do, we can, we can go free. Amen, you see. And again, there are some things where uh, doctors just can't help you. And we, we need, I mean, we know we need God, don't we? We sure do. But don't do what Asa did because he turned just to the doctors and, and it cost him. Was that, that was worth coming just to, to hear that, wasn't it? And uh, so anyway, verse 13, Asa died and he was buried and so on and so forth. You can read the rest of that. And so let me just finish by reading my notes here. Asa so Asa was a good king. He did right in, in the eyes of the Lord. Unfortunately, there were, the, there were those two events as he was older, as he got up in years. What have I warned you again and again? As we get older, chronologically, we need to be sure that our hearts do not become hardened towards God. We see that again and again with some of these kings. And, uh, and so I'm not saying his heart was hardened towards God, but, but he was seeking the Lord when he was younger. Now when he's older... Remember, he's not seeking the Lord concerning Israel coming against him. He's hiring the enemy. And now he's not seeking the Lord, you know, uh, concerning his, the sickness that hit him. You know, it, could it be that we've sought the Lord and he made us successful and he made us prosperous and now we get the idea we don't need him anymore? Could that be it? Something to think about. I, I need God. How about you? I, I need him. I need him. Actually, I need him more now than I've ever needed him over all these years. A lot of people don't look at it that way. They, when, they, when they're young, oh, I need God. They seek him. God blesses them. Then they get prosperous and then they forget the Lord. But I tell you what, I needed the Lord then. I need him now. How about you? Absolutely. And trust in him. And so anyway, but he, he, he had those two events in his old age where that, that Basha, uh, yeah, Basha came against him and he, and he hired the enemy and then this deal with his feet. So he was a good king, but uh, he had a good start. He had a good reign, but he could have done, uh, he could have finished better than he did. And then after his death, Jehoshaphat in Judah, are you glad you're not named Jehoshaphat? So why'd you, it's like the boy named Sue, remember? Johnny Cat, don't name me, don't name me Sue, you know? But his daddy actually named him Sue for his own good because it made him tough. Remember that, that song Johnny Cash sang? Would you rather be named Jehoshaphat or, or if you're a man named Sue? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I think I'd probably take, uh, I don't know. If you were named, I'd have to think about that. But if you were named Jehoshaphat, what would they call you for short? Jehasi or? Fat. No, they don't want to call fat. Don't want to call me fat. Anyway, but his son... His son came up, what? Joe. Yeah, Joe, you could, Joe, Joe, you could call you Joe. Anyway, uh, don't call me, what? You can call me Ray, you can call me Jay, you can, remember that commercial? You Remember that? Do you remember that from, Ernest did that, or somebody did that. You can call me Ray, you can call me Jay, I don't know. But anyway, so, uh, uh, Jehoshaphat takes over in Judah, but next week, I was hoping to get to it today, but time has slipped away. So we're going to get to it next week, and guess what? We're going to, we've been in Judah here now with, with, with Asa, but next week we're going to jump over to Israel, and uh, guess who we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about Ahab and his lovely wife. Jezebel. Oh, my, my. And do I have a set of notes for you on this? I was hoping to get to them today, but, but uh, Ahab and Jezebel. And I, you don't want to miss it. I'm telling you, what, you don't want to miss next week. And I may not get done with them next week. It, may, it might take me two sessions to do them. But I tell you what, you, have not, you hadn't dealt with nobody like Jezebel. I tell you what, you talk about wicked, mean, evil and Ahab I mean weak and moody and sulky and and uh, what a what a what a duo they were they were not the dynamic duo I'll tell you that what what a deal I, well I wish I could get to it now I mean but we'll but but next week 
So be praying that I'm able to get out what the Holy Ghost wants me to get out on this next week. Ahab and Jezebel. Wow, and I mean, she was, she was, she was mean and evil like that old Bo Weevil, I tell you what. You know that song? She is, she was, she's, she's mean. Not, bad lady, bad fish, bad stuff, and Ahab. So we'll get to it next week. Hey, if you're out there watching on social media and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, the Bible says if you'll call on his name, you'll be saved, you'll miss hell, and you'll make heaven. So cry out to Jesus and, and receive him as your Savior. Repent of your sins, cry out to him, call on his name. As I said, you'll miss hell, you'll make heaven, and he'll make your life worth living in the meantime. Okay, God bless you. Bye-bye.